Okay, algebra students, today we're going to start graphing parabolas, quadratic equations, whatever you want to call them. Our objective for the day is I can graph a quadratic equation in standard form by finding key attributes, including the vertex, axis of symmetry, and y-intercept. Now remember, standard form of a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx equal, oh, plus c equals zero, must have these equations set equal to zero. Just to do a quick little sketch, if our parabola is opening upward, this point down here at the bottom is called the vertex, and we usually see it written as an ordered pair. These points that intersect the x-axis are called x-intercepts, zeros, roots, solutions, etc. Uh, but we'll look at that a little bit more tomorrow. There's an imaginary line that goes through the center of your parabola called the axis of symmetry. And that simply means if you were to fold your parabola in half vertically, you have the exact same shape on both sides, or if you spun it um, on this axis, it would be the same all the way around. And one other little thing, this point right here, which looks like it's attached to the vertex, is known as the y-intercept, also listed as an ordered pair. Axis of symmetry, it's interesting to note, um, because it is a vertical line, we often see it as x equals some number, x equals 1, x equals negative 2. Okay. So, let's try our first equation. x squared min plus minus 6x plus 5 equals 0. It's already in standard form, so we can start to tackle it. Now, anytime you see an x squared term and your leading coefficient here, which is our a value, is positive, it will open up. If the a value here is negative, it will be a flip or it will be upside down. This parabola in question will open up. Now to find the axis of symmetry, we have to do some plugging and chugging. The axis of symmetry is represented by x equals some number. Our values are the same as quadratic formula where a is in front, b is in the middle, c is at the end, as long as we're in descending order here. So we're going to say x equals negative b. b is a negative 6, so we're going to have a double negative in there, all over 2 times a. Our value here for a is 1, even though we don't see it, we know that there's a 1 there. Double negative on 6 gives a positive 6, 2 times 1. We can simplify it further. So our axis of symmetry is x equals 3. So somewhere on this graph, our parabola will have an axis of symmetry at 3. Now to find the vertex, we actually use that axis of symmetry because it is at the bottom point of our parabola. So we're going to let x equal 3 and solve for y. So back to this original equation, we'll plug 3 in for x, you get 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 5, and instead of setting it equal to 0, we're trying to find a y value, so we're going to set it equal to y. We're going to simplify, 3 squared will give me 9, negative 6 times 3 will be minus 18 plus 5 equals y. 9 minus 18 gives me a negative 9 plus 5 equals y, and eventually I'll get y equals negative 4. So the value for my vertex is ordered pair 3 comma negative 4. So if I go out to 3, down to 4, and I know my parabola is going to open up, I just need one other point. So what I'm going to look for next is the y-intercept. I like looking for the y-intercept because whenever we're looking for the y-intercept of an equation, you just let x equal 0, and it makes the math pretty easy. So I'm going to use the same equation I used above. Let x equal 0 solve for y. So I'll have 0 squared minus 6 times 0 plus 5. But again, we're going to set it equal to y. Simplifying, 0 squared is 0, 6 times 0 is 0, plus 5 equals y, 
my zeros cancel out, 5 is equal to y. So my ordered pair for my y-intercept is 0, comma 5. So I go back and forth 0, I go up 5, and I draw a line. Now I know that this is my vertex, so this is the bottom of my graph. My y-intercept will give me half of my graph. Since this is the bottom of my graph, it's also called a minimum. And I know that this parabola is perfectly symmetrical about this line of x equals 3. So since I am 1, 2, 3 units from the middle of my graph, I can take this point and reflect it 1, 2, 3 units to the other side. So my other point, because we need at least three points to graph these, it's going to be perfectly symmetrical on the other side. Or if you were to fold this in half, or if you were to spin it, where would this point show up over on this side? It's three units from the center here, so it's three units from the center there. This is our y-intercept, and this is our reflection point. Okay, let's look at one more. Number two. We have negative 3x squared minus 6x equals a negative 2. Our first issue is these equations must equal 0. So let's do a quick rewrite. We'll add 2 to both sides. So we'll have negative 3x squared minus 6x plus 2 equals 0. Now, we're trying to figure out if the parabola opens up or down. I have a leading coefficient that's a negative value. So my a is less than 0 it's going to open down, or reflect. So my vertex point at the top, it's actually going to be a maximum, because my, it's my topmost point, I guess I would say. Now looking for the axis of symmetry, I have my A, I have my B, and I have my C. We have to let X equal B over, negative B over 2A. Again, I'm going to have a double negative here like the last problem, so I'm going to have minus a negative 6 all over 2 times negative 3. So I'll get a positive 6 on top, negative 6 on the bottom, and I'll get a negative 1 for a simplified answer. So my axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1. And if you wanted to graph that real quick, now remember this is an imaginary line so it's dotted. It's not part of the parabola itself, it just helps us graph the parabola. Now we're going to try to find the vertex. We use this let x equal negative 1, and then we solve that equation for y. So we're going to just do a quick setup. Negative 3 times negative 1 squared minus 6 times negative 1 plus 2. And instead of equal 0, we're going to let it equal y. Order of ops says we square this term first. So we'll have 3 times 1. We can go ahead and multiply these two together. Negative times a negative will give me a positive 6 plus 2 equals y. The 840 hourly starts in five minutes in the PPF classroom. Okay, sorry about the announcement. Negative three times one gives me a negative three. So now to simplify this further, negative three plus six will give me a positive three plus two equals y. Finally, y will equal positive five. So for my vertex, I've got x equals negative one, y equals positive five. So when I graph it, I go back one, up five. And again, I know that this graph will be upside down because of the negative leading coefficient. All right, hopefully last step. We're going to try to find the y-intercept. How do we do that? We let x equal zero. We use the same equation, but now we're going to plug in zero. Okay, so I have negative 3 times 0 squared minus 6 times 0 plus 2 equals y. Easy math when you're looking for the y-intercepts, because when you plug in 0 for all the x's, everything drops out. 0 squared is 0. Negative 3 times 0 is 0. 6 times 0 is 0. Plus 2 equals y. Finally, y equals 2. So your ordered pair here will be 0 and we go to graph that and look for our reflection point. So I go back and forth, 0, I go up, 2. 
Now remember this graph is upside down or flipped. And how do I get that corresponding point? I know I'm one point away from the axis of symmetry and I know that my y-intercept is up to, so I'm going to stay at that level and then I can sketch the other half of my graph. Okay, that's pretty much all there is to that one. Okay, last example we're going to look at. A little bit of a curveball, but hopefully the math will be easy for us. Um, my equation's in standard form, x squared plus 5. But I'm used to a, an x term in the middle, so it doesn't look like I have one here. So when I go to identify a, b, and c, I'll have a equals 1, I'll have b equals 0, and then I'll have c equals 5. Remember, they do go in order, but the first term is not always a, the second term is not always b. B. B corresponds to your x to the first power term, and you don't have one. This guy that's all by himself, that's a constant, he's always your c term. Okay, so real quick, let's see if we can figure out how does it open, up or down. My a term is positive, a is greater than zero, so my parabola is going to open up. Number two, find the axis of symmetry. Let x equal negative b over 2a. Well, b is zero all over 2 times 1. 0 over anything is 0. So my axis of symmetry is x equals 0. And when you go to graph x equals 0, it just happens to be the y-axis, which sometimes makes this a little more confusing. Now to find the vertex, we let x equal 0, and we solve for y. So in the equation, we're going to have 0 squared, plus 5 equals y. Again, all your x terms drop out. You're left with y equals 5. So your ordered pair for your vertex is 0, comma 5. So back and forth not. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we plot our point. And make that a little bit bigger. Okay, so I know my parabola opens up. I know that my vertex is at 0, 5 and I have an axis of symmetry of x equals 0. Okay, so what's going to happen when I go to look for my y-intercept? Well, again, if I do the same math I did above where I let x equals 0, I'm going to get the same value for y. y equals 5. really won't help me graph this parabola at all, but if I find any other one random point, then I can reflect it, and then I have my parabola. So I want to pick something easy. I'm afraid 1 is going to put me too close close to this point, so I'm just going to go out and select 2. So I'm going to let x equal 2, and then I'm going to find a value for y. So in my equation, I'll have 2 squared plus 5 equals y. When you square 2, we get 4 plus 5 equals y. So y, eventually, is going to equal 9. So when x is 2, y is 9. So we'll go out 2, this was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We'll put 9 up here. Okay. Now remember, this is the vertex. This is another point on the parabola. My axis of symmetry is here. And what we need to do is reflect that point to back. One, and now we'll have three points to join and form our parabola. Sometimes these are a little more confusing when you have to pick this random point. Um, this vertex, which it is at the bottom, is also a minimum. Okay, well, hopefully that's enough to get you started. The math isn't too bad, it's just knowing what to do when and how to get it all plotted. Whenever you get confused, always go back and look at your leading coefficient and say, hey, was this supposed to be upward? Was it positive or was it supposed to be upside down? And sometimes it helps you focus on where that vertex should be and how your other points should fall. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow.